Well, we were called conspiracy theorists when we said Ukraine was grabbing young men off the streets and throwing them into the front lines to fight. And then we were called Putin apologists when we then showed you the video proof that Ukraine was grabbing young men off the streets and forcing them to fight and die in the front lines. So we were conspiracy theorists and then Putin apologists. Well, I wonder what will be called now that the New York Times is now reporting the very same thing, that Ukraine is grabbing men off the streets and forcing them to fight and die. In a bombshell new piece from the corrupt New York Times, they call them people snatchers. An army of people snatchers are using harsh tactics to round up people in Ukraine and forcing them to fight and die. Someone else who's been called a Putin apologist for shedding light on this story is Larry Johnson, who is an ex-CIA analyst, and he joins us now. Larry, does it feel good to be vindicated by the New York Times? Yeah. Hey, it only took them 18 months to learn how to read and to uh, <laughs> comprehend a video. Right. I mean, the, the videos on this have been out since July of 2022. Right. And in, in the first months, if you recall, in April, May, and, and June, there, there were uh, images and videos as well as photographs in, in Ukraine. They were taping people, you know, this clear plastic wrap, saran wrap. They were taping guys, pulling their pants down, and then taping them to light poles. Right. Just because they were seen as, you know, uh, recalcitrant, not not too eager to join up. So the fact that The New York Times is now reporting this tells you how bad the situation is. They, they realize that the, this party is over, brother. And they detail it's not just that these are people snatchers. These recruitment efforts are harsh in the words of The New York Times. I mean, let's go through this. They talk about taking away their passports. Um they're and holding them so they'll take their way their passports they can't travel anywhere and in some cases they're putting mentally ill or handicapped individuals uh into this um that that's a part i hadn't heard that they're taking away passports and the new york times is reporting that um we had we had covered here on the show about the handicapped individuals in fact those individuals had who had lost limbs were being thrown in to the meat grinder uh but mentally ill what do you make of this passports thing? This, I think it was interesting. Well, it, it, it goes to a part of another story that came out last week about members of the Rada, the, the, the legislature. They're trying, they're trying to get out of Ukraine. And so to get out of Ukraine at the border, you got to show a passport. So right. no passport, no leave. Well, the fact that the Ukrainian legislators recognize that the end is near, which is why they're trying to get out. It's like, like that scene from the movie, the Titanic, you know, the passengers are moving one direction. The rats are running the opposite way. Right. That's what's going on. And <laughs> that's what's going on right now in Ukraine. Boy, the rats are heading for the lifeboats and uh, taking the passports away is just one other way to try to keep them in. And remember, a lot of these guys they are grabbing are like my age, you know, 68, 58. Uh, they're not exactly in the prime of their life, you know, unable to, uh, you know, take a 80 pound ruck on their back and, and run across uh, five, 10 kilometers. But don't sell yourself short. You lead firearms training classes and teach people how well, to shoot. Yeah. So you know how to do that. <laughs> and you have experience. And according to the New York Times, these guys, they don't have, they have no training no. at all. And they're being thrown right. in with zero training. So they're just literally yeah. being thrown up there to be, I almost picture like the meat hanging in Rocky when he walks into the freezer. Yeah. That's all it is. It's just like protection of meat hanging there in order to protect or whatever. They're, they have no skills whatsoever, Larry. Yeah, no, they have to. They think that by throwing guys at the front uh, will we, we, we'll somehow accomplish something. Even Budunov, so they're, they're intelligence chief. Uh, they're equivalent of the CIA. Even he was out the other day admitting that, yeah, we're stocking the army with all these useless bodies. They don't know. They have no skill. They have no ability. It's just uh, we're wasting our time. When he is admitting that, again, this lets you know that this thing's not going to drag on for two, three years, as some have predicted. Uh, the, the end is nigh. Uh, I think they'll be lucky to make it to summer uh, because you, you've got the, the political unrest, the intrigue that's going on. Uh, with, you know, like Zaluzhny claiming, coming out saying, hey, I, my office was bugged. You know, that that's like a whole Russian nesting doll right there. Yeah, let's talk about that. So the office of Ukraine's commander in chief, 
uh, Zaluzhny says he was wiretapped when I, they were scanning his office. They found wiretap devices in his office. Now, as a uh, as an ex CIA guy, what do you, what alarm bells ring for you when you hear that? What does that mean? Well, there's several possibilities, and you can't you can't rule any of them out at this point. Possibility number one was that this was actually a deliberate effort by Zelensky to, you know, wiretap him to listen in on his conversation so he'd, he'd know what plots Zeluzhny might be hatching. Uh, or alternatively, it could have been done by Budinov, the, the intelligence guy, that he wanted to keep track on it. Or Zeluzhny himself could have planted it and then come out with this, oh my God, look what we've discovered uh -huh. to build his meme that yeah, hey, Zelensky is is acting out of control and we need to get rid of him. Uh, so I think that the one thing we know for certain is this story is another indicator of the growing chaos within the Ukrainian government and the growing, in, the, you know, the decreasing ability of the United States to control those events. Uh, they, they may really be spinning out beyond our control, uh, but that... You know, Zeluzhny, just the mere fact if that he's checking to make sure if he's bugged or not, you know, he sh shows he knows how the system operates. And he's either playing it for his benefit or he legitimately discovered. But either way, I think it's bad news for Zelensky. And you've been saying that now for months that this is the end is nigh for Zelensky. And of course, we know the CIA's involvement in the intelligence community inside of inside of Ukraine for years, building out the SBU and the intelligence apparatus. I mean, they worked in lockstep to do this. Would it be out of character at all for the CIA to have planted something here, perhaps a story, to elevate Zeluzhny and therefore denigrate Zelensky in this moment? Do you think that's but in the purview? That, that's, not, that's another possibility, but uh, I, you know, frankly, I don't think the agency has that ability. Um, you know, then uh, Hollywood would give it to him. But uh, I think I, I have a lot more confidence in the uh, the skullduggery abilities of the Ukrainians uh, to pull something like this off. Uh, the United States uh, may have been apprised of it and could have, you know, given it a thumbs up. So, yeah, OK, go for it, do that. But but I think uh, there, there's not we're not seeing a wall of support form behind uh, Zelensky. But the military is also under some pressure because you got also getting these reports that are, I think, it was, don't recall, it was Wall Street Journal, Washington Post, about the attack on and, uh, Krinky, this uh, beachhead on the uh, east bank of the Dnieper River, that they, they, they talk about these re people that are untrained climbing out of boats and stepping on the corpses of other Ukrainians that have been dead for a while because the Ukrainians are under constant bombardment by the Russians. They can't withdraw their forces from the shore. And they're recruiting, quote, Marines who don't even know how to swim. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's a mess. And they're, they're, they are making public pleas for the public to rise up and stop the military chain of command from sending people to the slaughter. Yeah, this was another New York Times piece. I, 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 I'm kind of shocked. There's two major New York Times pieces that seem to be really calling out the uh, duplicity of the Ukrainian government, uh, the, the, the suicide mission, as this headline says, Ukrainian Marines on suicide mission in crossing the uh, Dnieper River, uh, in addition to the body snatchers story. I mean, these are two big New York Times stories talking about soldiers being frustrated with the Ukrainian officials and the government is corrupt and their silence is corrupt and, and ultimately... These individuals, the the normal average Ukrainian is being killed. And that's kind of the, 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 if you funnel these New York Times pieces down, that's at the heart of it. That innocent Ukrainians are right. being killed because of these corrupt bureaucrats. Yeah, this, this is not a coincidence. Whenever government policy is changing, it changes in the pages of the New York Times. The, these stories, as you know, you've, I mean, you've been covering it, uh, you know, co comprehensively over the last several months. This is not necessarily new. This, this cannon fodder uh, treatment of the Ukrainian uh, personnel has been going on for, you know, the last 11 months, for God's sake. So that's not new. 
And and yet the fact that now it's being presented with this kind of urgency by the New York Times as if it's something new and different, it's one more sign that this this program, the U.S. program of trying to use Ukraine as a proxy to defeat Russia, is coming to an end. Yeah, very interesting. Very interesting timing of these New York Times pieces, I would say, within the matter of a day or two apart from yeah. of each other, slamming uh, the bureaucrats and the corrupt government in Ukraine. Really interesting. Uh, Larry, great to see you as always. Merry Christmas to you. Thank you so much for your insights on this as always. Same to you, Clayton, and your family. Thank you so much for watching this segment here at Redacted. We are live every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of Redacted Rebels over at redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join the rebellion together right now by going to redacted.inc. We'll see you next time.